Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and in this session we will be focusing on variables and data types in Python. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First, I'll be giving you a brief introduction to Python followed by a few applications of Python programming language. Moving further, we will talk about the rules and regulations that we have to follow while declaring a variable. After we are done with that, we will talk about various variable data types that we have in Python and we will also run a few examples in the Jupyter Notebook as well. And finally, I will sum up this session with type conversion. I hope you are clear with the agenda. So let's quickly move on to introduction to Python. Python is a general purpose programming language which has become so popular among the developers nowadays. So let's understand what makes Python unique or what has made it popular among the developers. So first of all, Python is a high level interpreted language, which means it does not require any compilation just like PHP or JavaScript. Python has a very clear syntax and readability which has made Python very easy to learn. It is almost as easy as writing a program in simple English language. Everybody can learn Python. Even children going to school can learn Python. It is that easy. We can use Python as an object oriented programming language or we can also use it as a procedure oriented language as well. One more thing with Python is that we can run it on different platforms. For example, we can run it on Windows. We can run it on Linux. We can run it on Mac as well. Now let's suppose you're writing a program in Java and you have to write 50 to 60 line of codes. But what if I tell you you can do the same thing in Python with lesser line of codes, maybe 10 or 15 line of codes. Yes, it is possible. And this has given Python an edge over other programming languages. And that is the reason why people are switching over to Python because they don't want to put effort into development of complex programs. They want to put the effort at the implementation part. And that is where Python actually delivers. Now let's talk a little about the history of Python. It was created in 1991 by a Dutch guy named Guido von Rossum. It has a rather funny story attached to its name also. So our creator here was very fond of a comedy series called Monty Python. So therefore the name has come from over there. Now let's talk about a few applications I have listed for you guys. Let me tell you guys we have web frameworks in Python. For example, we have Django or we have Flask as well, which we can use for server side web development. We also have a wide variety of Python libraries at our disposal, which we can use for general purposes. For example, we have a TK inter Python library that we can use for GUI based desktop applications or for software development as well. With the easy syntax that we have in Python, we just have to focus on the creativity part. We don't have to worry about making any mistakes in the syntax or any of that sort. We can also use Python for databases to update or modify the value in the database. For example, we have MySQL, which is the most popular open source database, which we use for storing the Python data. As I've already told you guys, Python is an interpreted language. So what it means is it does not require any compilation, which makes it perfect for scripting. We can write long Python scripts for code reusability and automation of tasks. We can also use Python for prototyping. For example, we have a NumPy library, which is written in C programming language, but we can use it in Python to fast things up. And finally, we can also use Python in big data as well for its inbuilt features and easy access. For example, we have pandas, matplotlib and scipy libraries, which we can use for scientific computations or for statistics or we can use it for data visualization or data analysis and we can use pandas for as little as loading a file into the program. So this was all about introduction to Python and its applications. So let's quickly move on to variable declaration. First of all, we have to understand what a variable is. A variable is like a memory location where you store a value. Now this value you have stored, you may or may not change in the future. Now coming back to Python, to declare a variable, we just have to assign a value to it. You don't have to give any additional commands unlike any other programming languages like C, C++, Java, where you have to give additional commands for declaration and assignment purposes. Let's take a look at an example here. We have two variables X and Y and we have assigned values to each of them. We have given 100 to X and edureka to Y. So this is actually how you create a variable in Python. Now when I print these variables, I am going to get the output as 100 and edureka. You can also perform operations on these variables using the arithmetic operators. You can perform addition, multiplication, subtraction or division as well. Now let's try to understand this in the Jupyter Notebook as well. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable without assigning a value to it. Let's see what happens. It is going to show an error. The error says name x is not defined. So let's try again after giving it a value. Let's say x is equal to 10. 
it does not give any errors now so we have successfully declared a variable here let me declare one more variable okay i'll give it a value 12 now let's try to perform a few operations on these variables first of all let's just perform addition between x and y now let's try to do multiplication there's one more thing i want to tell you about variable declaration that is variables in python are case sensitive meaning an uppercase letter here is not going to be the same as a lowercase letter they're going to be two different variables let me show you it is showing another error which is saying name y is not defined because we have not assigned a value to a uppercase letter y let me give this another value here let me give it 20. so we have declared two variables here a lowercase value y and an uppercase value y which are going to be two different variables so we have understood here the variable declaration how we declare a variable now let's quickly move on to various variable data types that we have in python depending upon the properties they possess there are mainly six data types in python first one is the numbers or numerical data type the next one is the string then we have a list after that we have a dictionary followed by a tuple and in the last we have a set there is one more variable data type that is range we will talk about that in the end because it is mainly used when we are iterating through values or when we are using the for loop so let's try to understand all these in detail numbers or numerical data types mainly have numerical values and in numbers also we have four different data types that is integer float complex and boolean so integer mainly takes the whole number values without any decimal point values but if i add a decimal point value to a number it is going to become float and for complex we just use j as an imaginary part and add it to the number for boolean it only returns a true or a false so we use boolean for only categorical output now let's try to understand this in jupyter notebook first of all let me declare a variable x and give it an integer value let's say 10. now to check the type of a variable i am going to use the type function so it is going to show me the type of this variable let's say x that is int now if i add a decimal point value to x let's say 10.25 and let's check the type of this variable now we should get float as you can see we are getting float here now to make a number complex i'm just going to add an imaginary part that is j here let's check the type of this variable it is going to show complex number to understand the boolean variable let me take another variable now i'm going to check if 10 is greater than 9 or not so when i check the type of this variable here it is going to show me that it is a boolean and when i print this value it is either going to show me true or false since 10 is greater than 9 it is showing true as output so this was all about numerical data types now let's quickly move on to string data type string data type in python is written in single or double quotes as you can see here in the example that i have shown you i have two variables x and y and i have given them the string values hello and world now to access the string values we use the square brackets with the index number now you must be wondering what an index number is so let's take a look at an example here i'll show you what index numbers are in the jupyter notebook now let me declare a variable and give it a string value let's say add eureka now let me check the length of this string let's say so it has a length of 7 now what are index numbers so index numbers basically start from 0 so at the letter e here index number is going to be 0 and it is going to go until the end of the string so here at the end is the letter a so index number at the letter a is going to be 6 since we have the length of the string as 7 and the index number start from 0 now let's try to access some values from the string using the index number so when i write the index number as 2 i am going to get the value at the index number that is 2 which is letter u now we can also perform several operations on strings for example we can change the case of the string we can replace the values in the string we are going to see if we can actually replace values in the strings or not so let's try to update a value here at the index number 2 here so instead of u let's say i want d here it is going to show an error which is a type error which says string object does not support item assignment which means strings are immutable you cannot change them now to access a series of letters from a string i can specify a starting index and with the colon here i can specify the ending index as well let's say i write 8 but we only have seven indexes here let's see what is going to happen here so it has actually started from the index 2 that is u here and has gone to the end of the string but what if i write ending index as 7 since we have the length of the string as 7 let's see what it's going to do it is going to show the same thing but what if i write 6 over there it is not going to include the last letter 
because the ending index there is not going to include when we are accessing the values from the string. Now let's try to do one more thing here. Let's try to make all the letters here to uppercase letters. As you can see, I've done that. Similarly, I can make all the letters to lowercase as well. So this was all about string data type. Okay, one more thing I want to tell you here is to access the values from the end of the string, I can specify the index number using the minus here. So what I'm going to get here is starting from the end of the string, I'm going to get the two letters there that is at the index number five. That is K. Similarly, if I write name, specify the index number two here, it's going to give me the same value. So we can also access the values in the string like that also. So this was all about string data type. Now let's quickly move on to list data type. A list is a collection of arrays which is changeable and ordered, which means they have indexes just like strings. So we use the square brackets to declare a list. As you can see here, I have the list name fruits and inside the square brackets, I have the list values. Now we have to understand that we can declare different data types in the list, not just strings or not just integers. We can merge integers and string as well, or we can also use other data types in the list as well. So I'm going to show you this in the Jupyter notebook. So let's declare a list first. Give it some integer values first, some duplicate values as well. Let's just see what happens and a string value as well. As you can see, we have successfully declared a list. Now when I print the list, let's see what all values I will get. So I'm getting all the values that I have declared here. Now let me try to access the values using the index number, just like we did in the string. As you can see, we can access the values in the list just like we did in the strings as well using the index number. Now we can also update the values in the list using the index number as well. So let's just try to update the value at index number two. So instead of 30, I want 35 over there. So let's just see what it does. As you can see, we have successfully updated our value in the list. Now let's try to add a value using append. So what append does is it will add the value at the end of the list. Now let me show you. So there is a value at the end of the list that we have added using the append function. Now what if I want to add the value at the middle of the list using the index number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the insert function, specify the index number and give it a value. Let's just say 100. Now when I print the list, as you can see at the index number five, I have added 100 as a value. So the difference between the insert and append is that using the append, you can only add the value at the end of the list. But when you're using insert, you can add the value specifying the index number. Now let me do a few operations here. Let me try to reverse the list here using the reverse function. Now when I print this, the list is reversed. So this was all about list here. Let's quickly move on to dictionary now. A dictionary is a collection just like a list, but it is unordered, changeable and indexed. So we have a key value pair in a dictionary and we can use the keys as indexes because they are unique, but the values in the keys can be duplicate. As you can see in the example here, I have the dictionary name as animals and in the curly brackets, I have declared the key value pairs. So let's try this in the Jupyter notebook as well. So I'll declare a dictionary here. Let's just say courses is my dictionary inside the curly brackets. I will get key values. Let's just say one and give it a value comma key value that is two. And then I'll give it another value. Let's just say data science. I can give string values in the key as well. So I'm going to write here machine learning. Now let's see if we have successfully declared our dictionary. Yes, we have. Let's try to print the dictionary now. As you can see, I am getting all these values with key value pairs. Now I can access the values in the dictionary using the keys as indexes. I'll just write third over here. As you can see, I'm getting the value at the key that is third. Now for the similar purpose, I can use the get function and specify the key value there. It is going to show me the same value. Now to update a value in the dictionary, I'm just going to write the index number. That is our key value here. So instead of machine learning, let's just say Hadoop I'll write. So when I print the dictionary now, it is going to show me an updated value. Also, I can add the key value pairs using the square brackets. I'll just specify the key value. Let's just say four here. I'll add machine learning again. Okay, one second, we have made a mistake here. We wrote the wrong name. Now, as you can see, we have added another value to our dictionary. So this was all about dictionary guys. Let's quickly move on to tuple. A tuple is an ordered and unchangeable. 
Now what it means is it is immutable just like a string. We cannot make any changes in the tuple, but we can have the duplicate values in the tuple as well. So let's try to understand this with an example. So I have a tuple here which has a name animals and I have few values here. So let's just do this in Jupyter notebook as well. So I'll have my tuple as a name animals. So I'll give it a value in round brackets a few integer values first just to check of course and then I'll add some values like tiger. I'll just say lion and one more I'll give let's say giraffe. Now let me give a duplicate value here to check if we can actually add a duplicate value or not. I'll say tiger once again. So I have successfully created a tuple here. Now let me access the values here using the index number. Let's see if we can do that. So this actually means the tuples are indexed as well. We can use the index values to access the values from the tuple. Now since it is immutable or we cannot change it. There are not many operations that you can perform on a tuple, but you can count the number of duplicate values using the count function. So you're just going to write the value. Let's say tiger. We have duplicate value over there. So we will check how many times tiger is there. So it's going to give us the count here. So this was all about tuple guys. So let's quickly move on to set now. Now a set is a collection just like a list or a dictionary as well, but it is unordered and there are no duplicate entries present. Now let me show you this with an example in the Jupyter notebook. So I'll give my set as the set name and inside the curly brackets we can have values. Let's just say 10 20 30 40. I'll also give a few duplicate values just to check if we can have duplicate values or not. String value. Let's just say Eureka courses. As you can see we have successfully declared a set here. Now let me try to print this. Now as you can see there are no duplicate values even though when we have declared the set it was there. Now let me try to access the values using the index numbers. It has shown us an error which says set object does not support indexing which means a set does not have any indexes and every time we print a set it is going to show us a random value. So this was all about set guys briefly talk about range now. So range is used whenever we are iterating through values. Suppose we want to print numbers from 0 to 10. Let me put it in a list to get the values. So what I'm going to do is I'll just write 11 over here. And it is going to give me the values in the list that is from 0 to 10. So this is all about range guys. Now let me take a miscellaneous example. Now I'll have a dictionary with some values again and teacher values. Now let me try to make a list and try to get the values from A and B as well. Let's see if we can do that. Now when I print C here it is going to show me that our list C has the list A and a dictionary as well. So which shows you can actually make a list with other data types. For example, you can actually incorporate a dictionary over there. You can also do that with a tuple or a set. And if you want some value that you don't want to change in the future, you can actually make it a tuple and declare it in a list so that you cannot change that value in the future. For example, if you don't want to access any value using the indexes, you can make it with a set so that it does not have any indexes. So that is all about data types guys. So there is one more topic that I want to talk about which is type conversion. Now suppose we have an integer here that has 10 value and we have a string as well which says now when I try to add these two variables name and x it is going to show me a type error which says unsupported operand types. Now for this error I am going to do a type conversion here. So let's quickly talk about type conversion before moving on to the example. So type conversion is basically when you convert a type of a variable to another data type. So we have all these functions here which will convert the data type into their respective counterparts. Now let's try to look at the example now. So we are getting an error here. But what if I change the data type of integer into string? Am I going to get the same error again or not? Let's just see. We're not going to get any errors. So this is what is all about type conversion. Let me show you one more example. So we had a dictionary over there that is with the name B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the list function and specify B over there. So I have actually converted our dictionary into a list. So this is what is type conversion all about. Now we have come to the end of the session guys. If you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section below and we will be happy to get back to you. Thank you and have a nice day.